Hello and thank you for watching my video today. My name is Heather Klo and this PowerPoint is titled Legalizing Physician Assisted Suicide for Professor Hinjin Fox for Portland Community College Writing Class 121. The thesis of this project is as follows. The purpose of documents such as the Constitution and Bill of Rights were created to provide people with freedoms and rights. Legalizing physician assisted suicide is just another right that people should have so that they may find the freedom to make their own choice when facing death. As you can see here, I provided a definition of the terms physician, assist, and suicide that we will be discussing today. So most likely you're familiar with those terms, but you may be wondering, what exactly is physician-assisted suicide? Physician-assisted suicide occurs when a physician facilitates a patient's death by providing the necessary means and or information to enable the patient to perform the life-ending act. So why should physician-assisted suicide be legalized over other current issues going on in America? A lot of people are in favor of legalizing marijuana, and others are in support of legalizing gay marriage across all of the United States. Abortion and stem cell research are also hot button issues. But what you may not know is that physician assisted suicide is currently legal in three states and three countries outside of the US. Those states are Oregon, Washington, Montana, which just passed a bill in 2011, uh, Belgium, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. Right now, Vermont and Massachusetts are currently considering similar laws, so it may become legal sometime in the future in those two states. So let's look at some of the reasons as to why um, legalizing physician-assisted suicide across the United States would be beneficial. One of the first reasons is that tremendous pain and suffering of patients could be lessened. What this means is that if they choose to take their own life before a disease may take them months or even years into a fate of pain and suffering. Another pro is that the right to die should be a fundamental freedom of each person. As I said earlier, the documents um, of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are set up specifically to give Americans freedoms such as the freedom of free speech and the right to bear arms. This should be a freedom to facilitate their own death if they elect that. Suicide is not actually a crime, so there shouldn't be any reason why they can't utilize physician-assisted suicide if they choose to. Patients can die with dignity rather than have illness reduce them to a shell of their former selves. There are a lot of conditions at this time that can unfortunately ravage someone's body. For example, ALS, which is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is something that in just a few months can literally take someone from a healthy weight down to a frail human being who has to rely on a ventilator and cannot feed themselves anymore. Many people don't want to get to that point where they have to rely on family members or others to do basic functions that they have been doing every day of their life for 70 years or so. That can be embarrassing. Another pro is that health care costs can be reduced which would save estates and lower insurance premiums. Nurse and doctor time can be freed up to work on savable patients. Prevention of suicide can be considered a violation of religious freedom. Some people say committing suicide is a violation of religion as well, but the patient is not able to make a choice regardless of their religion if physician-assisted suicide is not legalized nationally. Pain and anguish of the patient's family and friends can be lessened, and they can say their final goodbyes. While doing research for this project, I read a lot of personal stories where people would state that they were able to say goodbye peacefully with their family members at their bedside. Many times people find out a loved one has passed away from a phone call and are often left wondering how comfortable they might or might not have been during that time. Nobody wants to think about things like that. It may be selfish to want to hold on to someone because you would miss them if they were gone, but it can be much easier to have them pass at their own choosing so that you can have fond memories of them instead of memories of them being in pain and at the hospital for weeks or even months. 
reasonable laws can be constructed which prevent abuse and still protect the value of human life. Vital organs can be saved, allowing doctors to save the lives of others. When a patient utilizes physician-assisted suicide, they are simply ingesting a medicine that stops their heart, which leaves all of their other organs intact. Organs such as kidneys, livers, and lungs can be donated to help other patients in dire need of organ transplants. Without physician assisted, uh, I'm sorry, without physician assistance, people may commit suicide in a messy, horrific, and traumatic way. They may just decide that they're done fighting with their disease and may take their own life outside of a controlled environment, leaving their family unexpectedly. Because Oregon enacted the Death with Dignity Act in 1997, the Oregon State Health Department has been keeping annual statistics about how many people have chosen suicide, whether assisted or unassisted. In cases of physician-assisted suicide, they've also notated common reasons that patients chose that route. As the next slides will show, overall physician-assisted death is chosen for personal reasons, but results in a very small percentage of annual deaths statewide. There are also safeguards put into place to ensure that all parties involved make an informed decision and that the right is not abused. The decision must be voluntary, voluntarily declared by the patient and the physician. This graph shows all suicides in Oregon from 1999 to 2003 and it separates males and females and the manner in which they committed suicide. As you can see, there are some that chose poisoning, hanging or suffocation, and some that used a firearm. These may or may not be related to medical reasons. This chart also shows that it's broken down between males and females and the age generations in which they committed suicide. The next set of graphs shows deaths under Oregon's Physician Assisted Suicide Act out of the total number of deaths. By comparison, the numbers are actually quite small. So for example, if you look at 1998, there were 16 deaths that were under the Oregon Physician Assisted Suicide Act, and that equated to only 6 out of 10,000 total deaths. In 2002, the Oregon Department of Health started including statistics as to why patients that utilized physician-assisted suicide chose to take that route. 84% feared losing their independence and freedom. Additionally, 84% were concerned about decreasing ability to take part in enjoyable activities. 47% were concerned about losing control of bodily functions. 37% were concerned about burdening their family, friends, or caregivers, <clears throat> and 26% feared inadequate pain relief. <clears throat> As the previous slide shows, different reasons for choosing to utilize physician-assisted suicide are important to various people, and only they can decide what is important to them when approaching their death. Legalizing physician-assisted suicide across all of the 50 states would ensure that this option is available to anyone, no matter their age or medical condition. But if this option is not available to someone, their life may be prolonged for a short time, however the quality may be severely compromised. So the question I ask you is, is that something that you would choose to freely give up? If you're interested in viewing further statistics regarding the Oregon Death with Dignity Act from 1998 to 2010 and the time that it's been in existence, please go to the link below and that will give you further information uh, similar to the chart we looked at earlier where it breaks it down by gender, um, manner in which they committed suicide, as well as ethnicity and age. Thank you again for taking the time to watch my video. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to leave that. Uh, just show you the Works Cited slide here in case you have any other information about the information contained in this presentation.